hello so let me just see we've got sound okay today I want to I'm going to read um, the Dhamma Chakabhavattana Sutta the Buddha's first uh, Dhamma talk um, he gave to the five ascetics which had actually um, turned away from the Buddha because he had given up his ascetic practices um, in his search for the noble truth and for enlightenment and so before I start reading I'll be reading from uh, Nanamoli Terra's um, translation of the Pali and before I start reading today I want to just um, say something about um, how best to listen to the Dhamma and when a Dhamma talk is given like my avatar right now you can see he's sitting there with his hands up so that's actually a proper uh, way to sit when you listen to the Dhamma or um, when if, if someone is giving a talk or is reading the teachings of the Buddha and so that's just for like um, how you can sit I mean it's probably better if you find a position where you're somewhat comfortable um, and so you can actually uh, understand what is being said but um, it's very respectful to put that put your hands up um, while you're listening to the Dhamma and um, so this is a uh, this is just one position and, um, and you can see my avatar how he's sitting there and so the next thing I'm just gonna give a few um, pointers in how to uh, go and listen to the Dhamma it's not that I'm actually uh, too big on like uh, everything should be so formal and stuff it's, it's just um, for the benefit of those who, are, who come to listen to these talks I think this is very very beneficial to hear so when we're listening to the Dhamma um, the best way to actually listen to the Dhamma is to be mindful while you're listening and, and actually to meditate while the Dhamma talk is being given and it might seem kind of strange that you would apply the technique um, of using the mantra uh, and just actually say to yourself while uh, the Dhamma talk is being given you say to yourself hearing, hearing, hearing and that's the mantra for um, for when the sound uh, touches the ear and the sensation of hearing arises and you can be mindful of um, ultimate reality right there um, the sensation of hearing at the ear medium and if for example while you're listening to the Dhamma and you become distracted and you start to think or your mind starts wandering off you can just note distracted 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 and focus back in on listening to the Dhamma or focus on your breath um, if that's suddenly if, if you're used to meditating um, on the stomach you know as the stomach rises and falls as the breath um, enters and leaves the body you have the sign in the body with the abdomen rising and falling and that should always be the easiest um, thing to, to return to because it's the most obvious and it's uh, is part of the body but in listening to the Dhamma we should return to the ear and just say hearing hearing and we shouldn't actually be worried about um, losing attention or not listening to the words and the meaning and we shouldn't um, yeah, get caught up in in thinking oh I'm not going to understand the Dhamma if I'm using the mantra um, and saying hearing hearing then I, I can <laughs> process everything and the Dhamma may be lost on me but that's not so and um, and this is actually the best way to listen to the Dhamma and you will see for yourself in trying it out for a couple of times so so please just um, 
Yeah, get comfortable and uh, get ready to meditate. And I will be reading the Dhamma Chakrabhavatana Sutta, and that is um, the Buddha's uh, sitting, rolling the wheel of truth. His first uh, Dhamma talk. Okay, and then let me just uh, explain the reason for for using the mantra as you listen to the Dhamma. Um, it will actually help you in in, in um, understanding the Dhamma in a much much deeper way than you would otherwise in just sitting and listening to the words and conceptualizing and thinking thinking about the Buddhist teaching. Um, because of course we know that what the Buddha really praised is uh, actual practice, not uh, debate or or like intellectual study and um, like a Buddhist psychology and taking that up as like a, a something to talk about and sit and intellectualize about or try and uh, think out some ideas that might be in line with the teachings of the Buddha. All that is, uh, is superior to actually listening to the Dhamma and being mindful and meditating and uh, being present. And that's always the key in the teachings, being present. So, uh, yeah, so please, um, and this is what I, I've been taught from my teacher and how to listen to the Dhamma. So, I'm saying this because I myself have seen the benefit of having a tranquil mind in going to listen to the Dhamma and being respectful and maybe even putting your hands up like I'm sitting here today. Okay, so, um, and this is actually important um, because a lot of people think they can just go out and read the teachings and uh, or like um, think about the Buddha's teaching but but if you really want to get close to the Buddha and be near um, the teachings and um, we're gonna have we're gonna hear in this sutta as well what I'm talking about um, this is the way to do it so um, so yeah, and the reason we are saying hearing is because um, when you hear uh, the sound at the ear, um, that's one of the six senses, and we have uh, the six senses being, you can also say seeing, but, but it's better for listening to the Dhamma, um, it's actually, you could even close your eyes um, listening to the Dhamma, and uh, maybe you have head headphones on so you have kind of closed your ears in listening to the <laughs> to this talk as well I don't know but um but that's actually pretty good so we have the, the eye and we have the nose and of course that's uh, seeing and smelling and then we have tasting and then we have feeling and then we have is it hearing that I forget that one and then we have thinking as uh, the sixth sense so um you can use all of these six senses um, and, and take them up as the mantra as seeing or hearing, whichever one is most clear. Um, but if you sit down and close your eyes and prepare to meditate, um, the, the ear or the hearing should be what is most clear. Or maybe even the feeling of sitting down or maybe have some pain or something. You can say feeling, feeling, and that's... Uh, that's just fine as well. Okay. So, we have now given homage and um, to, to the practice, and uh, maybe we should just uh, give homage as well while we're to to the Buddha um, before I start reading. So, yeah, let me read this homage. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Homage to the Blessed One, the Worthy One, the Brightly Self-Awakened One. Duttyampe Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa For the second time, 
homage to the Blessed One, the Worthy One, the Rightly Self-Awakened One. In Tatyampi, Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa. And for the third time, homage to the Blessed One, the Worthy One, the Rightly Self-Awakened One. Okay, the Dhamma Chakapavattana Sutta. Sitting rolling the wheel of truth. Translated from the Pali by Nanamuli Tera. Thus have I heard. On one occasion, the Blessed One was living at Benares in the deer park at Isipatana, the resort of seers. There he addressed the bhikkhus of the group of five. Bhikkhus, these two extremes ought not to be cultivated by one gone forth, gone forth from, the ho from the house life. What are the two? There is devotion to indulgence of pleasures in the objects of sensual desire, which is inferior, low, vulgar, ignoble, and leads to no good. And there is devotion to self-torment, which is painful, ignoble, and leads to no good. The middle way is discovered by a perfect one, avoids both these extremes. It gives vision, it gives knowledge, and it leads to peace, to direct acquaintance, to, di to discovery, to Nibbana. And what is the middle way? It is simply the Noble Eightfold Path that is to say, right view, right intention, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. That is the middle way discovered by a perfect one, which gives wit, which gives vision, which gives knowledge, and which leads to peace to direct acquaintance, to discovery, and to Nibbana. Suffering, as a noble truth, is this. Birth is suffering. Aging is suffering. Sickness is suffering. Death is suffering. Sorrow and lamentation, pain, grief, and despair are suffering. Association with the loathed is suffering. Disassociation from the loved is suffering. Not to get what one wants is suffering. In short, suffering is the five categories of clinging object, objects. The origin of suffering as a noble truth is this. It is the craving that produces renewal of being accompanied by enjoyment and lust. And enjoying this and that, in other words, craving for sensual desires, craving for being, and craving for non-being. Cessation of suffering as a noble truth is this. It is remainderless, fading and ceasing, giving up, relinquishing, letting go and rejecting of that same craving. The way leading to cessation of suffering as a noble truth is this. It is simply the noble eightfold path, that is to say, right view, right intention, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, right concentration. Suffering as a noble truth is this. Such was the vision, the knowledge, the understanding, the finding, the light that arose in regard to ideas not heard by me before. This suffering 
as a noble truth can be diagnosed. Such was the vision, the knowledge, the understanding, the finding, the light that arose in regard to our ideas not heard by me before. This suffering as a noble truth has been diagnosed. Such was the vision, the knowledge, the understanding, the finding, the light that arose in regard to ideas not heard by me before. The origin of suffering as a noble truth is this. And here we're going to go through um, the same uh, passage as before, it's just shortened down. Um, so this goes, the origin of suffering as a noble truth is this, such was the vision, the knowledge, the understanding, the finding, the light that arose in regard to ideas not heard by me before. And then it continues, this origin of suffering as a noble truth can be abandoned. Such was the vision, the knowledge, understanding and so on. And it continues, this origin of suffering as a noble truth has been abandoned. Such was the vision, the knowledge, the understanding, the finding. Um, that arose in me regard to ideas not heard by me before and then it continues to the cessation of suffering as a noble truth is this such was the vision knowledge understanding this cessation of suffering as a noble truth can be verified such was the vision the knowledge the understanding and all the way through. This cessation of suffering as a noble truth has been verified. Such was the vision, the understanding, and the knowledge, and the finding, and all the way through, in regard to ideas not heard by me before. So what the Buddha says here is the cessation of suffering as a noble truth is this. So the truth about cessation is that it can be verified and it has been verified. And continuing on, and this is actually very important because this is the cessation of suffering and that, that is going to be key in the practice of meditation. So when we are looking at um, phenomena or mind objects arising like the sound when we say hearing it um, the sound arises and then there is contact with the ear and then there is the sound so it has arisen and then it remains and then there is the cessation and this is true of all arisen phenomena and this is what the Buddha taught okay um, continuing on from cessation, um, here we go. The way leading to cessation of suffering as a noble truth is this. Such was the vision, the knowledge, the understanding, all the way through. This way leading to cessation of suffering as a noble truth can be developed. And such was the vision knowledge and understanding so now we're talking about the way leading to the cessation of suffering continuing on this way leading to the cessation of suffering as a noble truth it has been developed such was the vision the knowledge understanding all the way through in regards to ideas not heard by me before so it is verifiable um, according to the teachings of the Buddha and so we have the Four Noble Truths and then 
the Buddha actually says that the truth about these Four Noble Truths are that they are um, verifiable and you, I mean, you can do this um, yourself and come to see uh, the truth of the teachings of the Buddha. Continuing on, as long as my knowing and seeing how things are was not quite purified in these twelve aspects, in these three phases of each of the four noble truths, I did not claim in the world with its gods, its maras and high divinities, in this generation with its monks and brahmins, with its princes and men to have discovered the full awakening that is supreme. But as soon as my knowing and seeing how things are was quite purified in these twelve aspects, in three phases of each of the four noble truths, then I claimed in the world with its gods, its maras and high divinities, in this generation with monks, with its monks, and its brahmins, its princes and men to have discovered the full awakening that is supreme. Knowing and seeing arose in me thus. My heart's deliverance is unassailable. This is the last birth. There is no renewal of being. Let me read the last um, part here again. Knowing and seeing arose in me thus. My heart's deliverance is unassailable. This is the last birth. Now there is no renewal of being. And that is what the Blessed One said. The bhikkhus of the group of five were glad and they approved of his words. Now, during this utterance there arose in the venerable Kondanya the spotless, Im immaculate vision of the true idea. Whatever is subject to arising is all subject to cessation. So this was an idea that arose in venerable Kondanya as he was listening to the Buddha giving this teaching and what he realized was um, whatever is subject to arising he saw for himself in listening to the Dhamma he, he saw for himself that everything that has ever arisen anything is all subject to cessation when the real when the wheel of truth had thus been set rolling by the Blessed One, the earth guards, did I say guards? Um, oh, let me just start over. When the wheel of truth had thus been set rolling by the Blessed One, the earth guards raised the cry, at Benares, in the deer park, at Isipatana. The matchless wheel of truth has been set rolling by the Blessed One, not to be stopped by a monk, or a divine, or a god, or death angel, or high divinity, or anyone in the world. On hearing the earth gods cry, all the guards... Oh! <laughs> I'm sorry, I did it again. On hearing the earth gods cry, all the gods in turn in the six paradises of the sensual sphere took up the cry till it reached <laughs> beyond the retina. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna continue reading now. <laughs> I'm sorry. 
Okay, okay. On hearing the earth, on hearing the earth gods cry, all the gods in turn in the six paradises of the sensual sphere took up the cry till it reached beyond the retinue of high divinity in the sphere of pure form. And so, indeed, in that hour, at that moment, the cry soared up to the world of high divinity, and this ten thousandfold world element shook and rocked and quaked, and a great measureless radiance surpassing the very nature of the gods was displayed in the world. And then the Blessed One uttered the exclamation, Gondanya knows, Gondanya knows. And that is how that venerable one acquired the name Anya Gondanya. Gondanya, who knows? Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. see here. There goes Sadhu. 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 Bowing with great and deep respect. So that was the Dhamma Chakapavatana Sutta. Setting rolling the wheel of truth. Thank you so much for listening, and um, may this be of true benefit to you and your practice and everyone around you. And please feel free to check out my other videos, and I've done several readings of the Dhamma um, so please feel free to check them out and leave a comment or yeah if you have any questions I will try to answer it um, serious comments and questions and and all the best to you and thank you so much for listening and um, yeah all the best to you thank you <laughs>